Williamson County Schools has given us the funding to actually have an entire room dedicated for STEM and STREAM activities. Kids rotate in here during specials. They go to music, they go to art, hey, we go to STEM lab today. My primary function is to support the science instruction that happens in the classroom, and that really means uh, that I get to come and see all the cool things that go on during science instruction. So at Fairview here, they've really taken the lead in piloting a STEM, school-wide STEM approach. There's so much more that goes into these days than just building a science product. It's every grade level, working hard, researching, brainstorming individually, brainstorming with a partner. You be jotting down some notes of what you want to say. We're the only elementary school in the entire district that has something like this. So what are you guys doing today? Explaining how a windmill works. Windmill? Okay. How does a windmill work? Can you explain that for us? You need to make a base so it can be steady on the ground and not fall over. And there needs to be a space between the, like, kind of tower part and the mill so it can spin, because if it's too close, it won't spin because it's touching it. Does any type of friction or wind resistance have to come to play with this? Yes, um, because sometimes when the windmill gets too close to, like, the part that holds it up or, like, makes it, like, next to it, um, it would like hit um, the thing and it would like stop. But like sometimes you have to have it a little far out so it like wouldn't hit it too much. What did you guys make this windmill out of? Um, we used um, popsicle sticks, masking tape, uh, cups, uh, duct tape, straws, toothpicks, and um, cardboard tubes. Right. So when you guys made this, what did you think about it? Did you think you were doing a good job? Did you think it was going to turn out really good? Did you think it was going to work? Yeah, I thought it was going to work, and I had a really fun time building it. Okay, so do you have a fact for us? He, William was 14 years old whenever he made his first windmill. In Africa, in the country of Malawi, there was a famine, and a famine is um, where there's like a drought that's like so bad, it's stopping crops from growing and they can't eat. William's family, um, the 14-year-old kid, he um, and his fa family um, had one meal a day until like they didn't have any more. So how does a windmill come into play with this? He went to a library and he saw a book called Using Energy. He used the picture, it was a windmill. Him and his cousin and his friend made, like got some random trash and they called him like crazy and stuff. And then when they made it, he held out a white bulb and it was, it was on and then it got four more. And then he used the windmill to like water crops and bring back food and stuff. He built a windmill that could um, turn kinetic energy into electrical energy. What do you guys have for us today? We have a skate park. <laughs> a skate park, okay. What did you guys make this out of? Um, we made it out of some sandpaper, cardboard, um, cloth, and duct tape. What kind of facts did you learn about this? Um, that skate parks were made for when surfers, when the waves were too low and that they couldn't surf, so they had skate parks so that they could have fun even when the waves were low. What, how long did this take you guys? Did you guys think it was gonna be a really good project? Did you guys have fun making it? We had fun making it, but like it took a while to make it because they were so big. So what do you guys have today? We have a rocket. <laughs> you have a rocket? Okay, so what's it made out of? It's made out of a, a, a litter of a Coke bottle, um, duct tape, a golf ball, and some cardboard. What kind of energy does this use? Do you know? It uses pressure. Pressure? So um, you use a pump to um, put some air in there 
and then you release it and the pressure, since the pressure builds up, when you release it, it flies up into the air. I don't know if this is true or not, but my hypothesis is that uh, it builds up even more pressure because water's in there and then you put wa um, air into it and um, it kind of pushes that water and around and whenever you release it, uh, the water comes shooting out like the uh, fire in a rocket. How long did this take you guys to make? Um, it probably took us about uh, 30 minutes to an hour. We called it the flying carousel because we're hoping that the wings we use will make it spin. So you guys are going to fire these today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. You all excited? Yeah. 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 <laughs> They've learned the engineering design process like you would not believe. You forget sometimes, the, these kids are eight, nine, and 10 years old, the stuff that comes out of their mouth. All right, so what do you guys have here for us today? We made a moon rover to walk on the, to ride on the moon. We made it out of pencil, cardboard, uh, peppermint, straw, a uh, rubber band, and a little bit of money. What do you have there? It's a landing. It's a landing? Okay. And what'd you guys make that out of? Um, paper and a cup and just regular tape. You guys get up and talk about your... Uh, cool! All right, well, thank you guys. So, what are you guys doing here today? We're gonna talk to you all about the Volume City that we did. Oh, cool! What's it about? Um, it's about a city that's made out of um, 3D shapes, I mean cubes and rectangles, and they're like buildings, and like you color them and decorate or whatever, and the Ozobot has to go through the city. It's been really something special to watch the creativity come out in these students. But I think he needs a round of applause. <laughs> Are you excited to see the rockets? Oh, you better believe it. Who is ready to go out and launch some rockets? Scoop, somebody grab a rocket. Mr. Cicero will help you. We're only putting in about half a pint. Three. Two. Oops. Ah! <laughs> Most of you were brilliant. I didn't even have to tell them this. 
they put the fins on and they thought, well, if I have four fins, I need them to be equal. Two, one.